Hi, I'm Alistair from Lazarus Training, and in this video we're going to look at how to use a wound packing technique to treat a stab wound. Severe bleeding is one of the main preventable causes of death pre-hospital, and that is why on our first aid training courses, and indeed on our YouTube channel, we have a lot of content about how to treat a bleed. We might use something like a tourniquet, here we see a combat application tourniquet, or if it's not so bad, we might use dressings. Here we see an emergency care dressing. But in some cases, the wound site may be in a position that's not amenable to a tourniquet. So some easy examples would be a wound to the neck, wounds to the armpit, wounds to the groin, and wounds to the buttock. In these cases, we're gonna to have to rely upon direct pressure, but the direct pressure has to be very effective. Therefore, we're going to use a wound packing technique. So the first thing we need to make sure is that we are safe to deal with the patient. We need to expose the wound to see what we're dealing with. As quickly as possible, we need to apply direct pressure to the wound. And this may well be with our fingers. And if we can tell where the most active bleeding is coming from, the pressure should be on that point. Now, I want to replace my fingers with a dressing. And depending on what I have available in my first aid kit, if I'm lucky, I'll have a hemostatic agent such as celt gauze, combat gauze, or chito gauze. Now, in this video, I'm actually just going to be using some standard gauze, what we call crepe bandage, to simulate it because they're very similar in the way that they appear. This, though, doesn't have any of the hemostatic agent on it. Having opened up the dressing, what we're going to do is we're going to try and make a small ball with the first part of the dressing. This is so that we can direct the pressure much more uh, correctly, much more accurately. This is then pushed into the wound site and we're trying to get that ball over the point of the most active bleeding if we've identified that earlier. Now we need to keep pressure on. So using your fingers probably and switching out one for one, we push with our fingers to put the pressure on and then we push more gauze in and then we push that down and then we push more gauze in and we just continue this process of pushing the gauze in, maintaining pressure until we've filled the wound cavity. Now this might take more than one pack. So we keep packing until we've filled the wound site and the dressing protrudes past the wound site. This fact that the dressing is sticking out will help us continue to put pressure on and secure it. Now it's gonna be uncomfortable if the person's conscious, but we need to know that we're doing the best thing for them. Having maintained pressure on the wound for at least three minutes, a minimum three minutes, we can now have a look and see how we're getting on. Has this stopped the bleed? So after my three minutes worth of pressure, I can see that there's no blood coming out. The dressing at my end isn't soaked. This seems to be working. So I'm now gonna use a standard first aid dressing, a standard trauma dressing to secure this in place. So what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing a, a normal dressing here and I'm putting the pad over where the gauze is to hold it in place. I'm now going to wrap this around and because we're dealing with a wound on the neck the easiest thing for me to do is now pass this around under the person's armpit on the opposite side and bring it back round. Now elasticated bandage is going to be your friend here. This one has a long tail as we call it so it means I can go around a few times. Most of these elastic bandages when you open them up it has one short tail and now the long tail that I'm wrapping around the body. I'm trying to leave that short tail exposed if I can, because that will help me tie a knot and secure this all when I reach the end. If your bandage has what we call a pressure bar in it, we do not recommend you use it on the neck. We're just gonna look at bringing this around and securing the two ends together, which is why I left that bit exposed. Now, the American military, in their combat lifesaver program, they suggest that if you're dealing with an injury like this, you should actually secure this arm, the arm closest to the wound, down against the torso. That's my understanding, this is to make sure that the neck, the shoulder, all stays in one position, keeps the anatomy still, to keep the, the packing effective. A couple of little things, if you can, it'd be really cool to make some notes about what you've done, like make some sort of instant report, but if you can remember that in heat at the moment, you're doing well. We don't really recommend packing the abdomen, mainly because the blood vessels are at the back and you won't be able to get to them effectively. And we don't tend to pack the chest. Wounds to the chest, we suggest are more likely to need to be sealed and we have a video elsewhere on this channel that you can pick up to take you through that. 
Another thing that if you can remember, you're doing well, is that not every medical facility will have seen all of these dressings, depending where you are in the world. So therefore, if you can send a packaging with the casualty, that might be helpful. There's actually instructions on the packaging telling medical staff what to do about this dressing. So if they are unfamiliar with it, it could help the person in the long run. I hope you found the video useful to remind you of what to do, how to pack a wound. Or if you haven't had any training before, obviously this doesn't replace real face-to-face -face training, but hopefully it'll give you some idea of the steps that you could go through. If you have any questions, queries or concerns, well obviously drop them in the comments down below or contact us via all the usual channels. But otherwise, fresh content coming out all the time. Why not subscribe to the channel to become part of our community and 6pm Wednesday evenings UK time is when a new video gets uploaded. But you don't have to remember that. Just hit the notification button and you'll be automatically informed every time we upload a new video. So what's not to love about that? So until next time, bye then.